I just received this heavy package from Ukraine and I'm really excited to show you what's inside. So let's open it up. And here it is, it's a bolt. Now that might not sound very exciting, but I promise this is one of the most interesting bolts you're ever gonna see. You see, this bolt is part of the new safe confinement built over the reactor at Chernobyl. And these bolts have a special feature that allows them to significantly reduce the amount of radiation that the workers there were exposed to. But don't worry, there aren't loose beams in the structure where people have been stealing bolts. This is just one of the spare ones they didn't actually end up using in the final structure. In total, 650,000 of these bolts were custom made to form the arch and almost all of them were used, but the hundred or thousand that weren't used were given out to all the people who worked on the project. And these days there's always a couple of them floating around on eBay, so that's how I got this one. So let's back up a second. I'm sure you know what happened at Chernobyl, you've probably seen the HBO miniseries. So you know about the explosion, the initial confinement with boron and sand, and you might know that they also then covered it up over the next year with concrete and iron, and that was the what we call the original sarcophagus, and that's basically been all that's in place for the last 30 years, and it's been you know weathering significantly since then, and it was declared unfit at some point. So they started devising plans around 2000 to create a new sarcophagus or a new confinement, one that would last 100 years potentially. So that's what this new safe confinement is supposed to be. And the idea was for the new confinement to be significantly bigger than the previous ones and have space inside it so that they can eventually go in and demolish the whole reactor and without you know creating loads of dust that would escape into the atmosphere. As you can imagine, building this kind of structure posed huge engineering challenges due to its size and the level of radiation that close to the reactor. So the Ukrainian government held a design competition to get ideas for what the confinement should look like and no one got first place because no one had a completely ideal design I guess but uh, in second place there was a French design which was sort of these big concrete blocks that would be placed remotely I guess either by a crane or a robot uh, which obviously you know limits the amount of radiation any works are exposed to which is good and in third place there was a British design which was a sliding arch approach that could be built 100 meters away from the building and then slid over the top and I don't know why they didn't end up going with the French one, but the sliding arch approach is the one that they actually went with. Perhaps there were worries that the French design of sort of slotting concrete blocks together like Lego bricks would be harder to seal or harder to assess because they're building it right on top of the reactor. Whereas the British design, you can be built by humans and inspected by them further away from the reactor where there's less radiation. And then when it's all checked and safe, they can slide it over as one solid piece, um, maybe that's why. In the end, a French consortium called Novaka won the contract to build the arch, and so progress on a decade-long project to build the largest ever moving structure began. You see, attaching hundreds of thousands of bolts to a mega structure like a bridge or a big arch is a pretty time-consuming process, because you've got to attach the bolts hand tighten them, then go back and tension them all properly, and then have an assessor come around and check their all tension to the right force. It's a long process. So now imagine doing it 100 foot from a melted down nuclear reactor, and you can see why you'd want to minimize the time you spend there as much as you can. So that's where our interesting bolt comes in. It's made by a British company called Tension Control Bolts Limited, and the name gives you a clue about what its special feature is. So these bolts are designed to be used with a tool called a shear wrench, and it's basically a handheld electronic tool that it basically grips on to this sort of nipple thing at the end here, they call it, with sort of gear teeth in it, and tensions that in one direction, say anti-clockwise, and it also locks onto the bolt and starts turning that clockwise, tightening it, and then once it you know, locks onto the material it's trying to tension against, it gets to a tension of wherever you want to set it at. This specific bolt, it's 125 kilograms of force. So when it reaches that force, it's, the bolt stops moving and the tension on this shears off this end thing. So this whole end bit just sort of, you know, gets sort of twisted off. And that's because this bolt is designed with the steel in it, it's designed to shear at that specific tension. 
So you can basically just use the tool, put it on and it tensions and then this thing falls off. It makes the process a whole lot quicker and saves days or weeks of time that they'd have to spend if they were you know, using the regular old kind of bolts. So you can see why they chose them, pretty, pretty cool. These bolts also have a corrosion resistant zinc based coating that the company calls Green Coat, which allows them to guarantee their bolts for 100 years, which was essential for something to be part of the Chernobyl project. They wanted every part of it to be guaranteed for 100 years. So that was probably another deciding factor on these bolts being chosen. So let's take a closer look at this bolt itself. So you can see it weighs over a kilogram. And it comes with this little certificate of authenticity type thing from Novaka. I want to display the bolt on my shelf and I had the idea to suspend it above a model of Chernobyl with the new confinement in place. So I 3D printed the most detailed model of Chernobyl that I could find, which happened to be this one of just after the explosion before any of the cleanup. I had a go at painting the model using images of the plant for reference. I only had one paintbrush and some old acrylic paint. but it came out all right. Then I made the new confinement by finding an old tin can and cutting it in half. I flattened down the ridges with a hammer and then I made a front and back out of cardboard. Covered the whole thing in paper mache to hold it together. and then I paint it matte gray. I cut a base out of wood and cut some slots for the confinement to fit into. Then I painted the whole thing black and I glued the Chernobyl model onto it. I got these brass rods and I bent them all into shape. So all together they make a capital I shaped mount. I super glued the rods together and then covered them with some black heat shrink. I bent the ends of the arms into the final shape to hold the bolt and cut off the excess. Then I drilled a hole in the model just behind the chimney and glued the mount in place. So here it is all finished. I really like being able to take the arch off the model and see the reactor. I think the whole thing really highlights the story of the bolt. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Bye.